why would you want to use Git to deploy to your websites? Well, Git already knows about all the changes in your files, um, and it's already tracking all that stuff, so it's the perfect tool to deploy those changes uh, securely and quickly to um, your production or pre-staging servers or anything like that. Um, and the way that we do that is very simple. We set up a local repository and we set up a remote repository on the servers that server or servers that we want to push to and um, then we just uh, link the two up and push from the remote to uh, or from the local repository to the remote repository let's jump right in here I have a folder on my desktop called git sandbox and in it I have a um, file an HTML file pull that over here um, and we're going to attempt to push that to a server. So I've got a uh, server here. Um, I am I browsed over to it. It's on my. Uh, it's actually running in VirtualBox down here. It's sent OS, so it'd be much like um, uh, any hosting uh, server that you had bought. Um, so the the um, I've browsed over to it. We've got the classic Apache 2 test page, and we're going to try to replace this page with uh, this information using git to deploy it. So the first thing we have to do is have git start tracking our files. Uh, and the way we're going to do that, if you don't know how, we're going to open a git bash. Um, you can right click and actually do in git init here, which is pretty cool. Uh, you don't even have to open the, the uh, <clears throat> bash. But let's open it up and let's just do um, git And then uh, we've gone ahead and initialized a git repo. You can tell because we have the um, dot, <laughs> move that across the screen there, we have the dot git folder uh, right here with our repo files in it. Um, so let's go ahead and commit uh, those changes to the repo. So we're going to put that index.html file. We're going to start tracking it. So we're going to go uh, git add period that adds all the files to the staging index and then we're going to go uh, git commit space dash m add a message commit and it's done so if we do um, get status we can see that uh, the uh, everything's clean nothing to commit so we are now tracking index.html if we do git log we'll see there's that commit that we made so um, now what we want to do is we want to jump over to our remote server now normally you would like SSH into your server but I've already got it in a virtual and it's open right here so I'm just gonna do it this way but I will I will work mostly in the command line so that uh, um, it will it will be exactly the same as if you were SSH'd in. So we, we've got our, our directory here, and what we're going to do um, is we're going to make a folder out here uh, in the uh, www directory, and you could really put this anywhere you wanted to, um, but I'm going to put it out here just outside the HTML, the live HTML folder, so that people can't get to my actual Git repo. Now, um, this isn't a live server, so it doesn't matter anyway, and I'm using a root user, which you normally wouldn't do, but uh, this is all for testing. The other thing to note is that if you have, um, you know, like a shared hosting through like a GoDaddy or Network Solutions or something, you, you may not have access to this, uh, to a folder outside of the, the root folder, in which case uh, you may just want to take like execution rights or, or read rights away from, you know, all other users on your, um, on your actual Git folder, your Git repo. So you might initialize that inside the HTML folder, but we're not going to do that. This is a better way of doing it, um, but you could do that as well. Uh, might talk about that a little bit more in a second. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder out here named Git, and we're going to do it through the command lines, so just like if you were SSH'd in. So let's cd over to the directory. Um, and then... Uh, we're in www, so let's make go over into that directory. Now, 
Uh, a lot of what I'm following here is I have a, I have a little gist on on GitHub that explains how to do this, and and there's been others. I'm, I'm by no means the first who has has kind of showed how to do this, but uh, it took me a little bit to get my head wrapped around what was going on. So I just figured making a video would 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 be helpful. Um, and I'll put a link to that gist in the uh, description of this video. So we're we've made a folder named Git and we've changed directories into it. It's inside the www folder. Um, it doesn't have to be called Git. It could be called whatever you want. Like I said, you could put it wherever you want. Um, this is just what I like to do. In fact, I usually uh, make this folder and then put like the site name inside that folder of whatever site I'm working on. So um, we're going to basically initialize a uh, git repo here, just like we did on our local machine. So we're going to do git init, and this time it's going to be a bare repo. So we're going to use the um, if I can if I can type here, we're going to use the bare flag, and what that's going to do is it's going to initialize that. Let's let's look at that structure actually. So we've got our folder named git, and we open it up. And we see that it's instead of putting a dot git folder in, it's just dumped what would normally be in that dot git folder out um, out into here um, <clears throat> because there is no work tree. It's a bare repo. It's it's not meant to have files actually worked on in it. But what we're going to do is we're going to utilize these hooks and we're going to make a post commit hook so that when we commit changes. Uh, or in this case, when we push changes and they get committed to this repo, it's going to check those changes out into the live HTML folder. So what we need to do now is uh, make a post commit hook that will check those changes out. And the way we're going to do that is very simple. Um, we are going to use this command. We're going to do cat hooks uh, post receive and, and cat is a little uh, like Unix command that allows me to enter some uh, create a file and enter text into it so we're going to do that and then we're going to paste in our code that checks out those changes uh, what this does is it gets the work tree and it checks it out into var www.html which is exactly where we want it to go right now so I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to hit control C to escape out of there. Um, and uh, we, if we if we jumped over into the file browser, we'd see that it created that post receive um, a hook right there, and there it is. We could we could actually edit it, or if you were in the command shell, you could use vim or, or nano or whatever. Now the only other thing we need to do is make sure that the user <clears throat> that's going to be pushing these changes up here has execution rights because. All that we've created in this post receive hook is basically a uh, shell script that gets executed um, after you know the git repo receives the files. Uh, and in fact, you could put other commands in that shell script, like commands to remove files that you don't want to end up being in the live HTML folder, that kind of thing. Uh, kind of the sky is the limit there. So let's go ahead and make sure that the user, uh, which again hopefully is not root in your case and is whoever is going to be. Um, pushing changes to the server. Uh, but anyway, we're going to do chmod uh, uh, space plus x, and then we're going to do it to the hooks post receive. So um, make sure that this user has execution rights on that post receive file. So that's it. We're done. We're done on the server. We can uh, we can shrink that down. Now we've got our changes committed to our local repo. All we have to do is add that remote server as um, as a remote. Uh, on the local. So to do that we just do uh, this little command here. This is one thing I don't like about the uh, uh, bash in Windows. The, the git bash in Windows is, is you can't just paste directly into it. You have to go up to the top. <clears throat> anyway, uh, git remote add. We're going to call it live server. So this is just an arbitrary name we've given it. Here's the IP address and the user um, that's going to log into that server. So this is going to create an SSH connection. Uh, to it, and it's going to say we're saying that the repo is in var www git, and so that's all we have to do. Uh, we just enter that, and boom, it's done. Now we want to push those changes up. So um, again, let's let's look at that Apache um, test page here one more time. We'll refresh this. We've still got uh, the Apache test page. 
let's go ahead and push those changes up there and we should see it magically change. The way we do that is we do git push, we called it live server. The first time we push it's going to want to know what branch do we want to go to and we want to go to the master branch. Now it's going to ask me to log in. It's created that SSH connection and now I need to put my root password or whatever user you're using password in there. And boom, it pushed the changes up. That post receive hook should have fired and it should have checked those changes out into the live uh, HTML directory. So let's pull up this Apache test page again and refresh it. Oh, now we have uh, <clears throat> a file that mimics this local file here on the server. So let's kind of see that in action again. Let's edit this file. Um, so let's do testing um, again. Save it. We're going to get um, commit and we're going to add and send a message at the same time. And we've committed that in there. All right, so it's in the directory. Now all we have to do is let's push those changes. So uh, git push uh, live server. This time we don't even have to tell it master. We can just do this and we can do and boom, it's going to push. Now let's bring this back up again and refresh. Oh, testing again. It's a beautiful thing. So stop going FTP commando and start using git. Um, if you're not already using git to track your files, start using it to track them. If you're not using it to deploy, it's that simple. There's no excuses. Have fun.